out of curiosity for you, like, wh when do we see people at their happiest with body image? I mean, if you think about people that you see in and out every day, um, when are people content or are they ever content with what, how they look? So I think that the, the happiest that a person can be in terms of their appearance is when they have a degree of acceptance. Mm. Um, and obviously arriving at acceptance, it's a journey. Uh, and age can definitely help with that. Uh, we've discussed earlier how as we become older, um, it is easier to feel less compelled to go to the gym mm. and to put all of our energy into our appearance. Um, but that certainly depends on, on how you're moving through life and who you're surrounded by. And I think that it's important to have a variety of people around us, friends in, in, in terms of who aren't all the same as us, exactly the same, because that can really elevate the pressure we feel mm. to look a certain way. Mm. Um, and I think that people that are experiencing healthy relationships with a variety of people, mm. it helps them to, I guess, arrive at that acceptance. Mm. And I think also if we're putting all of our emphasis in and into our appearance, it sets up a situation where we think that uh, our importance to the world depends on how good we look. Mm. Um, and that's never a happy situation because it means that if we stop looking good, who are we? Mm. Absolutely, and I join with that definitely. And I think what <clears throat> one of the things that I've reflected on um, from from doing the work here is that there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with setting yourself goals with exercise, mm. goals for health. You know, going to the gym, trying to kind of work towards something. But the guys that send team, the guys that tend to be happier. Um, with this, often are the ones that can balance that out mm -hmm. with other experiences in their everyday life. So they're connecting to other stuff that they're interested in. They're connecting to a sense of where their skills lie across many areas in their life. And exercise and fitness becomes one part of that, mm -hmm. but actually doesn't define them. There's a whole range of things that they might engage in, which bring balance mm -hmm. to their everyday life. And psychologically, what we tend to see is that tends to give us more opportunities to get a source of happiness, contentment, mm. um, feelings of fulfilment, rather than, as you're saying there, allu alluding to there, just focusing on one aspect or one part of our ex everyday experience. I guess we're touching on this already, but what can people do then? You know, if they are worried that perhaps exercise and body image has become a slightly bigger part of their life than they would like to, it to, what kind of things could people be doing to try and manage worry and distress around mm. that, do you think? So I think one of the first uh, beginning points, perhaps, is for us to think about the image that we are presenting to everybody around us. If we think about our social medias mm. and what image we're using there and what images we're putting onto social media. Um, because if, for example, we feel like no one knows the true us and that we are clever, we're funny, we're approachable, but all the images of us, of us are shirtless, Mm. Um, then we are contributing in some way to how we appear to others. Mm. So then it might be a matter of engineering, I guess, a shift away from that. Um, and I guess the next level beyond that is as you engage with people, how much of yourself are you revealing? Are you revealing your true self? Mm. If you are very clever, um, then, you know, how often do you mention that? Um, as opposed to relying on what you know works, which is a shirtless picture. Mm. Um, and that's a really, really good starting point. Uh, and I guess th the next step beyond that is to look for, I guess, enjoyment in exercise again and to be able to identify if you don't feel like going to the gym today, then you don't go mm. and the world won't stop. If you were invited out with friends for a healthy meal, uh, Enjoy that meal as opposed to thinking I must stay home and control my, mm. my intake of food because of this and this and this for the gym. So I guess having again more harmony mm. in that aspect can really help. I absolutely agree and I think one of the words that keeps coming up whenever we're thinking about this issue here is the word balance. Mm. And that can mean lots of things to different people but I think certainly I'll join with you. that I think one thing that would be really important is looking across your life and thinking about how we can get sources of achievement and pleasure and, and enjoyment from different aspects of our experience. And that part of that may well be exercise and part of that may well be um, engaging in kind of a healthy lifestyle. But there may be other aspects that we also want to privilege, things we want to connect to, 
that create a bit of balance, which means we don't have to just rely on that one thing all of the time. Mm -hmm. I think also there's something really important in that question of why am I doing this and what do I want to feel by the end? Mm -hmm. So if I get the body I, I want, how do I want to feel? Um, and as we alluded to earlier, there's a lot of assumptions about how we're going to feel mm. and how great that's going to be for us. Some of which are true mm. and, and some of which might not be true. But another question I think is really important to pose or to think about is how else might I feel that way? Um, are there other experiences that might make me feel powerful, that might make me feel in control, that might make me feel um, content or a sense of satisfaction with myself? Because it might not just be through changing our body or working on our body image that we feel that way. And it's really, really important to kind of reflect on that and think about that across the whole of our lives and different aspects of our experience. What do you think about the idea of what we put out there on social media and the way in which we sometimes interact with each other around body image? Do you think that actually we all have a part to play a little bit in perhaps changing perceptions around body image and reducing pressure? For sure. I think that oftentimes we can indirectly contribute as well to, uh, to the, I guess, um, elevating the hypermasculine and giving that a place over and above everybody else. And I think it's important there to not always give higher esteem to a person just because they look good. Mm. Uh, to investigate and to engage with people on a variety of levels, not just the ones that we want to have sex with. Mm. Uh, and I think that's a point that is a really healthy point to arrive in as well for mm. us, is to not, um, I guess, sort who we engage with mm. because of who we want to have sex with. Mm. Yeah. I agree. And I, I think there's something that I think we, all, we could all do in a way, in that we all get fall in these traps, you know, we look on Grindr, we look at particular people we want to uh, have sex with or connect with in some way, and then often the, the way in which we communicate is often based on the way someone looks, we're interested in their physical attributes, we go for that first. And that's not to suggest that we, you know, you shouldn't go for people that you're physically attracted to, but it's just thinking about how kind we are, mm -hmm. um, what do we say to people that we're not attracted to, um, what images do we put out there of ourselves in order to perhaps change that emphasis mm -hmm. on just the physical and perhaps promote other aspects of our experience. So one of the really good things about social media and the way in which we consume media now is that we can choose who we engage with and the material in which we engage. And there's actually loads of possibilities for us to think about how we might follow or engage with experiences and people that have different body images. Uh, that have different perspectives around body image and the way in which they look. And by doing that, that can actually reduce pressure on ourselves. It changes the attention and the way in which we conceptualise body image and issues around this. And in the long term, can help to reduce anxiety. Mm. It can also mean that when we get bombarded with those messages of, you've got to look this way, you've got to have abs, six pack, all, all of those things that we're really aware of, it stands out a bit. It stands out in contrast to the things that we've been looking at on an everyday basis. And that allows us to perhaps be a bit more critical mm. about those messages. Mm. Just perhaps challenge them a bit more, think about where they're coming from, and perhaps not take them as fa at face value as frequently as perhaps we've, we can all be guilty of at times. Are there anything else that you'd want to recommend, Dan, before we close off this conversation today, is there anything else that you want to say to people if they were worried about this issue or are thinking that actually it's becoming a bigger part of their life than they'd like to? For sure. You mentioned earlier about things that we can do in terms of action points. And one thing that I think is really important is if you love exercise, but you're looking for more variety, or if you're looking to meet people in a way that is not related to apps, a really good way is to, is to attach those two things together and to join potentially an LGBT sporting group, which allows you access to peers um, and also access to uh, sport mm. and physical performance, but in a way that is not as high pressure. Mm. Uh, you are able to observe people. Uh, they can observe you. And I do believe that we do reveal our truer selves when we don't think anyone is observing us. And that's really important, I think, because if we are thinking about the image that we're presenting um, and... 
I guess, meeting people on their authentic level mm -hmm. as well as our authentic level, this allows a space for that mm -hmm. and achieves the goal of being healthier as well. What are your thoughts, Dan, about the responsibility perhaps that we all have to, to be kinder to each other? And I'm thinking particularly in an online space mm -hmm. and, and on apps. I think it's really important because I think all of us can identify a, a response which we can easily call a rejection online. Um, and even the best looking people still get rejected by someone. So then I think it's really important to evaluate, evaluate those and think, how did that make me feel? And what language was used? Being kind is the most important part. And I guess if we think about how we express what we want on our profiles um, in terms of sex and who we'd like to have sex with. Um, and then I guess also when we think about how we speak to our friends mm. and are we echoing the negative mm. messages that we don't enjoy but are we then continuing those? Um, and I guess that also, also filters into our conversations. Mm. Uh, and if we critique people who we don't know purely because of their appearance. Mm. Uh, and just editing ourselves that way, I think, is a small step, which if everyone does that, leads to a bigger change. Yeah. We've come to the end of our discussion today. Dan, I wanted to say thank you so much um, for... Um, contributing today. There's been loads of interesting points raised. I think what we've been talking about today is that this is an issue that affects an awful lot of gay men. Um, it affects everyone, um, but particularly gay men are vulnerable to this bombardment of images and ideas that particular body image or body images hold power, particular power, and they'll bring with it a sense of enjoyment and pleasure and confidence in our lives that we know just this isn't true. And I think for both of us today, I think we've both reflected that what we've seen here at Dean Street and what we've seen in the work that we do is that sometimes aspiring to that body image and, and working very hard to get there doesn't bring with it all of the kind of emotional well-being stuff that I think a lot of people hope that it will. And hopefully today we've had a bit of a conversation about some of the things people might do to just try to create some balance around exercise, around aspiring to look a particular way. And Keep in mind how to connect to a sense of well-being in other areas of your life in the longer run. Um, and I think, as you really nicely said there at the end, there's something that we can all do to contribute to this. We can all think about what we're putting out there into the world about body image and what we look like. And we can all think about what we want to consume and the types of material that we want to engage with. Because it affects how we feel, but it also affects how other people see us and then how we, have, we interact with other people in the longer run. Um, for anyone that's worried about body image or has concerns, you can always come and speak to us here at Dean Street um, and it's something that we want to be talking about more and more. And so I'm sure we will revisit this topic again at some point in the future. If you've enjoyed our conversation today, um, please follow us on social media. There will hopefully be lots of good content coming your way over the coming months, so stay tuned. Um, and any questions, just get in touch.